in our in our own nature, mm -hmm. if we truly understand the message of the gospel, we're not going to like it. Mm, wow. Because the centrality of the gospel is the cross. Well, we don't like the cross. Right. We like the resurrection part. We like the blessing part. Uh, we like the breakthrough parts. Like we love everything that probably comes after mm. the cross. Right. But if 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 marketing 101 is, hey, you need to suffer. Yeah. That's not going to sell well. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to What Was That About? My name is Moses Khan, one of the pastors here at All People's Church. Excited about our program today. As always, we have our lead pastor here, Dr. Tony Soldano. Pastor, it's good to have you. Hey, Pastor Mo. Good to be here, buddy. Yeah. Welcome back, by the Thank way. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, and you too, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, listen, you just finished um, a, well, really, you finished a sermon series mm -hmm. on forgiveness. What a powerful sermon series. Uh, we talked about forgiveness, all the different aspects. But yesterday, which is Sunday, um, you talked about increasing our pain tolerance, increasing our pain tolerance. And um, that's an interesting concept because human beings, um, you know, if I can speak for them, uh, don't like pain. And so, you know, according to, according to your message, if we're going to go where God wants us to go, if we're going to overcome forgiveness, overcome hurts, then we're going to have to learn to... Build a greater pain tolerance. Right. Yeah. So many people in the Bible, um, you know, what what they receive after salvation really comes out of a lot of pain and suffering, doesn't mm. it? I mean, even if Jesus, it says that he, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Right. Like he's the ultimate example. But every leader, every main character mm. uh, that we can derive any sort of lesson mm. from in some way, shape, or form, suffers to one degree or another. Uh, Paul maybe is the most extreme right. other than Jesus of the things that that he had to go mm. through. And yet, godly man, mm -hmm. excellent man, you know, loved Christ, uh, did a whole 180 in his life, Pastor mm -hmm. Moses, right? And it wasn't his lack of spirituality it wasn't his lack of pursuit of the truth or of Christ that yeah. that caused pain and suffering. Actually, the opposite is true. The mm. the more he pressed, the further he went on. the The more he desired the things of God, the yeah. more he suffered. But you know, probably the Old Testament is even a greater example of people like Moses right. and you know uh, people like uh, Daniel. Yeah, you know that all suffered some right. to some degree. Yeah, yeah. So, so pain, would you say pain is inescapable as, as a Christian if we want to grow, if we want to become the people God wants us to be, that there is pain, suffering? Now, it might not look the same for everyone, but would you say that that is an essential part? Absolutely. There's no, there's no escape. Right. To some degree or another, if, you know, the Bible says very clearly, those that will live godly will suffer persecution. Like, right. Like, Pastor Mo, let me just say this. In our... In our own nature, mm -hmm. if we truly understand the message of the gospel, we're not going to like it mm, wow. because the centrality of the gospel is the cross. Well, we don't like the cross. Right. We like the resurrection part. We like the blessing part. Uh, we like the breakthrough parts. Like <laughs> We love everything that probably comes after mm. the cross, but we don't come to Christianity because of the cross. We come because we have an encounter with Jesus, yeah. and then we understand the cross. Right. But if if if... If marketing 101 is, hey, you need to suffer, yeah. that's not going to sell well. Like, like I think Jesus never took a marketing course because when he called Saul, at that time his name was Saul. He's mm -hmm. a great person. He's a terrorist, mm -hmm. right? Yep. He's persecuting Christians. He's putting them in jail. He's tearing families apart. And, and so Jesus basically smacks him in the face, mm -hmm. knocks him off his high horse. And then he says to Ananias, remember, so Jesus blinds him. And then he says, go tell him. Jesus says to Ananias, go tell him the things he must suffer. Well, mm. That's not marketing 101. Yeah. What happened to all the, uh, here's the, the prosperity, here's the great ministry you're going to have, here's the relationship, which, and I, I want to get into this about modern-day prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. And modern-day 
uh, purpose and destiny in your life. Uh, Jesus didn't, apparently he didn't go to these marketing classes to really sell uh, what ministry yeah. and Christianity was all about. Yeah. Well, th- well that's interesting you bring up, bring up ministries and uh, in, in light of suffering because there's all these ministries, Pastor, that um, really exist around this idea and concept of constant breakthrough. That somehow Christianity, the Christian life, is a life of constant breakthroughs, constant good things, constant, you know, uh, overcoming and and this promotion and that promotion and that promotion. And so, so many of these ministries exist. And maybe if you're watching, you give to these ministries and you're, you know, you you mm-hmm. you, you you sow into these things. But are those ministries? Is first of all, is that sustainable? You know, and is that does that line up with what God's word actually says? <laughs> well, I I think there are breakthroughs and, mm-hmm. and I think there are seasons of uh, of favor yeah. and of blessing. Can I just say, I think they're few and far between. We're mm-hmm. always looking for them. But the reality is that the majority of biblical Christianity, not modern day, mm-hmm. biblical Christianity is about pressure, adversity, wow. Uh, difficulties, hardship. Isn't this what all the letters pretty mm-hmm. much are about? Yeah. Endure, yeah. overcome, be yeah. resilient. If that's the breakthrough that that people are looking for, mm. that's a little bit different. You know, the breakthrough is you're going to escape something, right? right? Um, Jesus talks about overcoming in the midst of. Yeah. Like, I don't even see that word breakthrough I don't know where they come up in the mm-hmm. It's just not there. Mm-hmm. You know, now, does the Lord provide these things? Absolutely, you know, open doors and opportunities, but but a lot of it, yeah, a lot of it is endurance, mm. long suffering. We, we don't like yeah. these words, Pastor. And we don't hear about we don't hear those kinds of prophecies. No. Right? No. Uh, when we hear prophecies modern day or the prophecies that sometimes we seek, because sometimes, you know, people seek a word. Um, they don't want to hear that. And number two, th- that's probably not what they're going to hear. If you go to a service and someone gives a prophecy who's a minister or whatever, it, it tends to be, well, here's the good coming your way. Here's, here's what God is, here's the Red Sea that's going to open. It always tends to be language like that, not, well, Paul um, or Ananias tell him what he's about to suffer for me. Right. Yeah. I, I would, you know, not that I have every prophecy, but I, I would I would venture to say that, you know, if the 80-20 rule is is true, which I believe it is, I believe it's very accurate. Um, what are the majority of today's prophecies about? Mm. A relationship? Yeah. Money? Right. So wealth, and probably how great your ministry is going to be mm. and how, you know, all the wonderful things you're going to accomplish for God, which, which, by the way, deals more with notoriety. Mm. But... But if you look at it biblically, if you get a prophecy like that from God, mm-hmm. he's just painted a bullseye on you. Mm. Wow. Right? Wow. So, but that's what we're looking for. It's almost like, I don't know, it's almost like we're, we're, we're searching out these fortune tellers, these mm-hmm. Christian mm-hmm. fortune tellers to tell us what we believe, you know, we want to hear. Now, the beauty of God is there is always redemption. Mm. You know, there always is resurrection on the other side yeah. of 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 death so we know that right we know that that in the end god always works things out together for our good mm-hmm. but what's not talked about is is the process and maybe you can talk about this because yeah. here's where people i really believe get discouraged right is is there always that breakthrough that is that is the carrot that never comes yeah but then pastor mo it's almost like they die in the process in other right. words in the in, in God forging me mm. to be like Christ yep. and in the disciplines, you talk a lot about disciplines mm-hmm. and discipleship. Yeah. Well, that all has to do with that long suffering and the fruit of the spirit and, and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to work within you. We don't hear that stuff yeah. because it doesn't sell. That's right. You know, nobody wants to hear this is what you're going to suffer. <laughs> now, why didn't Jesus, here's what I, well, this is what I mean. He didn't go to marketing 101. Mm. Why didn't he tell him about the great revelation and his place in heaven? Jesus mm. didn't say anything like that to him. That came later. Right. And and when and talk about this. 
Pastor Paul, when, when Paul finds himself in a prison cell, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus didn't say, breakthrough is coming. You know what he said? My grace is sufficient for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is wild. Which is wild. And you never see Paul even praying things like, God, get me out of this prison, or God is going to break me out of this prison. It's um, it's so it's it's so simple, and I think one one of the things that we've lost to value, Pastor, is consistency and longevity in our relationship with God. That has somehow become the dull, boring aspect of Christianity, and so we want these grand things, and the devil is in those grand things, but. What he's against is the consistency and the longevity of, of the game, you know, if I can call it that. Um, and but that's where that's where God God is. God, you know, you said it works out all things for our good. But sometimes my good and God's good aren't the same thing, right? And so the way I define good and the way God defines good, because we look at life through different perspectives, they're not the same thing. And so the good yeah. that I might want Him to work out, He might not be working that out. Yeah. And so. That's incredibly important for us to, to remember that that verse and the application of that verse is not you're going to receive one good thing after the other, but really the application of that verse is that God is not going to allow your life to be wasted. He's going to use it in, in every way that he can. He's going to orchestrate and allow some things mm -hmm. to happen, and he's going to use it. You know, we talked about yesterday, we talked about Joseph. Um, mm, yeah. I'm sure there were days wow. Joseph must have thought, this isn't good. Mm -hmm. You know, right. being in a pit, not, not good. good. <laughs> being sold out, not good. Uh, being accused of rape, not good. Mm -hmm. Right? Being forgotten in prison, not good. Right. And yet in those moments, mm -hmm. God was saying, well, this is really good. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is working out and forging in mm -hmm. you my will, my desire, yeah. my character. And ultimately, we see it. Uh, in the life of Joseph, we, by the way, we see the promotion. Mm. We we see the wealth, the prosperity. Yeah. He gets like God is a restoring God, right. but generally that's not where we want to. You know, or maybe let me say it this way: that's the only place we want to live. Mm. We don't want to live in that process of of when when I think it's not good, mm -hmm. and God's going, no, no, no. Uh, I think it's good. We're right. we're just not on the same page. Yeah. With the Lord, and so I like what you said about maybe what we think is not good. God's going, <laughs> that's it, right, right on. Uh, we could talk about Job and others, yep, like so many. when Job was going, like this is not good, mm -hmm. and God's going, oh, this is this is great stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is working in you something that yeah. you might not see. But let me just say this, and then I, I think you're going to close it off, Pastor. Yeah. But I, I really believe we need to come back to the mm. centrality of the message of the gospel, of the New Testament, of how God really, really thinks and believes because we're off. We are mm -hmm. off. And this is why I believe that people are disillusioned mm -hmm. because I think we have over-promised and under-delivered. And, and I, I, I think, see, Jesus hasn't gone to marketing 101 but certainly we have, mm. and and uh, maybe we've sold something that the Lord said, "I, it's not in the book." Wow, yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> well, listen, thank you for joining <laughs> us for today's episode. We can talk about this on and on, wow. but but really, I think you know, as Pastor Tony just said. What happened to the good, simple message of the gospel? Pick up your cross, deny yourself, follow me. Those are the simple truths, church, that are going to carry us in consistent ways, bring out longevity. And so uh, wrap yourself in and around that. As always, make sure you're subscribed, like this video, comment below, and we'll see you on the next episode. Pastor, thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Take care.